graduated fall 2014, Bachelor's of Economics. He began Toastmasters in January 2013, and he's still doing Toastmasters now, but at the Pembroke Pines um, Club. So he's been in Toastmasters for about two and a half years now. He has done the evaluation competition, which our division officer is not here, um, spoke about. So he did evaluations for a club, area, and division in 2013 and 2014. Um, he now works at the Federal Reserve and regulations and supervision. He did two internships there prior to that. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty awesome right now. Um, he's my best friend and mentor, and I cannot say that without him, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Uh, because I came to this club. So the first club I came to my freshman year, and given that I'm very white and I get really red, <laughs> and I don't speak, it doesn't really help out. Um, so he helped me out a lot. So I'm gonna bring up my best friend, my mentor, and a great asset to this organization, Mr. Jordan Rashad. I want to show you guys something tonight. But before I do that, I'd like to ask everybody to please stand up. Come on, stand up. We're going to run through a very short exercise. First, I'd like everybody to stretch out. Come on, stretch. Go, go, stretch. <laughs> Okay, good, you can follow the direction. <laughs> Next, I want for you to introduce yourself to the people that are standing by you and shake their hand. Hey, dear, we already met, but hey, what's up? Hey, dear. Boom. Hey. Good job, you guys are good at this. Okay, you can sit down now. The last and final thing I want for you to do as you sit there in your chair, I want for you to wiggle. Wiggle in your chair. Everybody wiggle. Come on, wiggle. <laughs> this man's wiggling. All right, good job. Now Simran, Simran, where are you? Does everybody know Simran? Simran, you invited me here this afternoon because you wanted for me to give a very inspirational speech where I was going to capture everyone's heart. But you see, I submit to you that I have already done that and much more. In just the first 60 seconds of my speech, I have already, one, made sure everybody was awake. Two, I introduced everybody in here, hopefully to somebody new. And finally, I've cleaned all the chairs in this room so that you don't have to do it later. <laughs> You're thank welcome. You. <laughs> you can thank me later. I'm very excited to be here tonight. And I'm excited because I have a very special message that I want to share with you all. You see, tonight I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to forget every preconceived notion that you have about public speaking. And I want for you to reconsider the way that you think about speaking in public. Because I promise you that it's not what you think it is. And for this, I have a prescription. It's called the triple C. The triple C is confidence, character, and courage. Triple C, I want for you to remember that. You see, my story today takes me back to the summer of 2013 when I played masseuse. 
They say you never forget your first. <laughs> and boy, I will never forget mine. You see, that summer was special. I had been pursuing a relationship with everything that I had. I had been working hard to make it work, day in and day out. Ladies and gentlemen, I was pursuing a job. And you see, by the day that this story takes place, I was already 12 weeks in. I was doing an internship. And I had been working alongside people that I really cared for. Colleagues, executives, people that really represented a lot to me in my life. And I was giving it my all. But on this very day, oh boy, this was the defining moment. You see, today, ladies and gentlemen, I was gonna give a presentation. This was my moment to shine, the moment that I had been working for. And I remember sitting at that meeting, posture nice, hands crossed in front of me. I felt ready. But for some reason, I still felt cold. I felt like I was shaking. I was nervous. I was about to give a speech in front of executives, colleagues, and people that were much older and much smarter than I was. But I knew what had to get done. So I remember sitting there. And I noticed one particular thing during this presentation. The meeting was carrying out as it should. But everybody that was talking was speaking from their seat. I had never seen that before. Not that it was right. Not that it was wrong. It was just the way that things were done. It's the way that they did things. So I said, OK. And I sat there. Oh, the meeting approached the end. And it was my turn. The person in charge of the meeting stands up and says, now I'd like to call our intern, Jordan Bouchard. Please welcome him. I stood, sat there, and the only thing that came through my mind was, let me stand up. So I stood up, and I walked to the front. And I was, as I was walking through the front, I felt the eyes of everybody piercing me. I was nervous, ladies and gentlemen. This was a big moment. But as I approached the front, I turned around. And I looked at everybody in the eyes just like I am today. And everything changed. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I was about to play masseuse. And I'll tell you why. I had every single person in that audience I had their heart right in my hand. I had your heart, <laughs> your heart, and even your heart way back there. I had it right here. And everything changed, you see? Because before then, I was nervous when I would give a speech. I thought that it was me that had to deliver. It was me that had to come through. But no, 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 that's not the way it is. You see, everybody in the audience that day, everybody that I loved and that I cared for, wanted to hear what I had to say. And I was about to do that because I had their heart right in my hand. It's not that I said anything particularly special. You see, I gave my presentation as I should. But ladies and gentlemen, that moment when I stood up from my chair, I displayed my first thing today for my prescription. I displayed confidence. And to everybody sitting in that audience, that was key. It didn't matter what I had to say after that. The fact of the matter was that I was trying and that I displayed confidence. My story doesn't end there. I wanna ask you guys a question. How many of in you, how many of you in here play a sport? Can you please raise your hand? 
how many of you in here play an instrument? Okay. You just remembered you play an instrument. <laughs> how many of you in here sing? We have a few singers, that's good. How many of you in here read? Oh yeah. All right, we got some readers. And how many of you in here like to write? Now, I submit to you today that all of you have my second part of my prescription today. You see, each one of those things that I mentioned today, and I think I saw 100% of the room raise their hand for at least one thing. Each one of you have character. You have a certain flavor to you. I see it by looking around. I see all these smiling faces, and behind those smiles, I know that there's character in everything that you do. You see, here at Toastmasters, that's a storm talking to us. <laughs> we use character to our benefit, and we work on that. Here in this club, we work on the way that we move our body. That's character. We work on the way that we speak, how we move our voice. That's character. We even work on our grammar. Ladies and gentlemen, if that's not character, I don't know what character is. You see, all of these things are things that you all have already. And we use those in here. We work on them. We try to make them better so that when we deliver, we're solid and we know what we're doing. The prescription still doesn't end there. We're still missing one ingredient. What was that? Courage. We're missing courage. Zoe, where are you? Here. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe's a seasoned, seasoned <coughs> Toastmaster. And I heard her give a speech the other day. And out of the many wonderful things that she said, she said one thing that resonated with me. She said, the most important thing that you can do in life is to tell other people how you're feeling. And that stuck with me. Because I think you had a lot of sense in that. It takes courage to get up here. We're all thinking different things. We all have things inside of us that we want to express to the world. <coughs> Whatever avenue you want to take for that, this can be a platform for you to do that. I know you have that courage in there. You just need to make your intentions known. And I'm a firm believer in that. You need to have courage. You need to say what you're feeling. And most importantly, you need to stick by your word. What better way to do that than to deliver it <coughs> to public in speaking? You remember that first exercise that we did at the beginning? Ladies and gentlemen, that's called crowd control. And every speaker's dream is to have control of a crowd at some point. The ability to make everybody stand up, <coughs> stretch out, <coughs> shake the hand of the person next to them, and even wiggle in their chair. But you see, I wasn't alone in that process because I saw something in you all, and I knew I would, that you probably haven't even figured out that you have. You see, the fact that you stood up from your chair, you already displayed confidence. You already did exactly what I did that day when I gave the presentation. That's the first step. The fact that you stretched out and you shook the hand of the person next to you. How you doing? Nice to meet you. That's character. That's in here. And the fact that you all walked through those doors, boy, you all displayed courage today. You already have it in you. Public speaking is an art. I firmly believe that. And it's an art that takes much practice. 
Just like anything else in life that is worth doing. It takes practice and it takes dedication. But you see, there are so many areas in life that public speaking can help you. Think of all those class presentations that you have to give. Think of any time that you've wanted to ask a question in class, but you've been too afraid to do so. Think of that dream job that you want when you're sitting down across the interview table and you're shaking in your boots. Think of that. And most importantly, think of yourself when you're out in society. When you're walking through the hallways of GC, or you're trying to make your way up the elevator to the seventh floor in the library because you can't find room to study anywhere else. All of those things require you to have confidence, character, and courage. How do you all feel right now? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a platform that I believe that you can accomplish many of the things that you've been trying to do. I challenge you when you walk outside of those doors to remember the prescription that I gave you today. If you, don't, if you join or if you don't join, I really don't care. But for those of you that do join, I can promise you one thing. This here in Toastmasters, this is where you develop those skills. And honestly, this is what Toastmasters is all about. Thank you.